In this video, we're checking out Trey, a brand new IDE from ByteDance, the company behind TikTok. They're offering free Claude usage, but the real question is, does it actually hold up? We'll try out one of its built-in prompts and see how it handles cloning an app using just a single screenshot, something competitors like Cursor and Windsurf already do pretty well. Let's see if Trey can deliver or if it's all just hype. This is the website for Trey, and if we scroll down, you'll see they've described Trey as your ideal development partner seamlessly balancing human and AI capabilities. It's all about this dynamic collaboration that ensures every task is handled by the most suitable agent. What they've done here is have a single agent control multiple agents, automatically assigning tasks that are best suited for each one. As we've seen before, they're introducing a fully agent-based workflow, but here you can't choose the models or use different LLMs for different use cases. Instead, one main agent assigns tasks to the smaller agents automatically. If we scroll a bit further, we can see some other features mentioned, like the chat and image upload capabilities. They've also added this context feature, which helps the AI agent get a better understanding of what you're trying to do. Plus, there's auto-completion as well. These are pretty standard features that most code editors, like Cursor and Windsurf, include nowadays. But let's go ahead, download it, and test it out. I've opened up Tray, and right away you can see it looks visually distinct from VS Code, even though it's actually a fork of it. You'll notice the different icons on the right, like search, source control, and extensions. It's also imported our previous extensions, which is great to see. Now we've got Tray AI here, and it seems like we need to log in to use it. I'll quickly log in and then we'll move forward. So I just logged into Trey and now the AI features are enabled. Over on the right, you can see the AI chat box interface that's opened up. I have to say, the whole interface looks a lot better than Cursor and doesn't even feel like a VS Code fork anymore. There are two modes available, chat mode and builder mode. They've also included a couple of examples we can use to test it out. Now we know that most of these examples are pre-baked and don't necessarily demonstrate the tool's actual coding performance, but let's go ahead and try them out. I'm going to click on the to-do list app example. And as you can see in the prompt, it has written to use the web stack. Next, I'll go ahead and open a folder. I'm creating a new one named test and opening it now. Oh sure, I trust the authors. It has started processing. So let's see what it generates. If you take a look down here, you'll notice they've only included the Claude 3.5 Sonnet model for now. I do remember they mentioned they'd also provide the GPT 4.0 model. So I'm not really sure why that's missing at the moment. Since it functions as an agent, it'll automatically run commands in the terminal. All we need to do is approve its request. Now it's asking to install the remaining dependencies. The project structure has been set up and the dependencies are being installed now. Next, it's modifying the app's file to create the basic to-do list app, adding the necessary code. It's asking for a review of the changes and once it's done, I'm going to accept everything. Okay, the development server has started and we need to run the command to launch it. The app is now available on this port. Let me copy the link and open it in my browser. This is the to-do list app it managed to create and I have to say, the UI is not impressive at all. It's a very basic app. Let's go ahead and test it out to see if it actually works. First, I'll write a task and here's the first issue. The text isn't visible in the default task card it generates while other functions like marking a task as complete, marking it as done, or deleting it do work, the main problem is that the task name doesn't appear at all. Because of this, I would consider this as a fail. After the initial test, the next step is to provide it with a screenshot I've taken of the Spotify app and ask it to clone the app. I've instructed it to clone the provided screenshot and turn it into a fully functional application. For now, we still only have access to the Claude 3.5 Sonnet model. It understood that we want to create a streaming application similar to Spotify, and it's attempting to clone it. The process begins with creating a new React project. It has also listed all the dependencies that need to be installed and is asking for permission to execute the necessary commands in the terminal. Let's go ahead and grant it access. Now that it has confirmed all dependencies have been installed, it's proceeding to edit the main React application structure and create the required files one by one. I'll wait for it to finish all the edits and then I'll click the accept all button. The basic project structure has been set up and it's asking to start the development server. First, let's accept all the file changes and then run the command to start the development server. 
the app is now active on the local host port. So let's open it in a browser window. Before we move on to the final results, there are a few things I want to point out. First, I just saw that there's a web view feature where the app appears directly in the code editor so you can quickly preview it without needing to open it in a browser. Initially, the clone it generated was very bare bones and didn't resemble the website at all. However, after some iterations, which I'll show you shortly, it started to look much better. The images, which still haven't loaded, aren't an issue since I'll need to provide them manually. One key problem we encountered was that the app forgot to load the postcss.config.js file. Even after repeatedly prompting it about issues with Tailwind CSS, it only identified the problem later. It turned out that Tailwind CSS wasn't properly installed and the post CSS configuration was missing. Once it updated the configuration, we finally got to the current version of the app, which looks much better. As you can see, this is the final app that was cloned. You can see the icons right here, but the rest of the pages don't work except for the home page since that's the only part we provided for cloning. The animations are working properly, those it managed to infer and add based on the screenshot. The images though are still missing because we need to provide them manually. Other than that, the app actually looks spot on. That said, there were quite a few errors along the way to get here, but honestly, the end result still looks pretty great. Trey's free Claude usage is definitely a nice perk, but the IDE kind of struggles to deliver on its promises. Its rigid agent-based workflow really limits flexibility, and there are just too many errors, like missing configurations, that make it pretty frustrating to use. While it does show potential, competitors like Cursor honestly offer a way better experience. For now, Trey feels more like hype than a reliable tool.